Hello and welcome. Today I want to explore with you the peculiar world of aquatic gastropods. In particular, we will be looking at bladder snails, which are found in fresh water all across Europe as well as North America. These snails are hardy and tolerant of pollution, can live in oxygen depleted waters, and they have developed some other intriguing adaptations to all kinds of adverse conditions, which permits them to settle in a vast spectrum of aquatic habitats. So let's explore the lives of these creatures and see how they manage to be so successful. The feature that stands out the most in snails is of course their shell. And even there, the bladder snail is extraordinary. Its shell spirals in the opposite direction of most other snails. So seen from the top, the shell coils outwards counterclockwise. Only few other snail species share this characteristic. The shell has a basic plan that the snail can adapt if it detects the presence of different types of predators. If there are snail crushing fish present, the shell will be grown much thicker and rounded with a big reinforced opening to make it harder for fish to get a proper hold of them. When there are crayfish predators, the shell will grow reinforcing ridges and a smaller opening to make accessing the contents of the shell more difficult for their claws. And this extraordinary shell houses an extraordinary body. Covered in cilia, tiny beating hairs, it is able to glide across the terrain with unmatched grace. The movement of suspended particles around the body betrays the presence of these cilia even on their tentacles, drawing in water containing information about its surroundings. The eyes are located at the base of the tentacles and allow for some limited visual perception. A little further back, the snail has organs called statocysts, liquid-filled chambers lined with sensory cells. They contain a particle that always rests on the bottom, which gives the snail a sense of its orientation in space. If we look from underneath, we can see some of the most spectacular features of this animal. We can follow along and see the cilia on the foot of the snail beating to propel it forward. And the folds of tissue at the front hide another surprise, capable of moving in mesmerizing ways. But we can only catch a glimpse of it when the snail decides to eat. It is the radula, a tongue-like organ covered in rows and rows of scraping teeth. This organ is perfectly adapted to scraping algae, diatoms and other microorganisms off surfaces, as well as rasping away on decaying organic matter. These snails are very efficient creatures, being able to feed, grow and reproduce at astounding rates. That's why they have spread invasively all across the globe. They were thought to have originated in the Mediterranean basin, but a missing fossil record in Europe suggests they have evolved in North America. Their ancestors lived on land and had a lung. The bladder snails kept it that way and didn't let the lack of gills hold them back. They are breathing surface air and store it in an organ in the shell. This renders them independent of the oxygen content of the water. They can also sink by compressing the air they are storing in their shells and rise to the surface by doing the opposite. They can do this at will and use it to avoid predators as well as for surfacing to breathe. And they are able to venture out of the water, an ability they employ to avoid predation of their egg clusters in case they detect the presence of certain predators. All these adaptations make up a unique skill set that none of the numerous arthropods, worms or vertebrates in our waters seem to be able to match. They might have originated in North America, but they are commonly found in the Western Hemisphere and have now spread to every continent except Antarctica, primarily by hitchhiking unnoticed on aquatic plants being traded globally by humans. Some ecosystems are overwhelmed when these prolific snails make an appearance because their populations can grow very fast to meet the available food supply. 
But in other bodies of water, they are kept in check by predation, as well as parasites like snail leeches. So these fascinating creatures absolutely have a place in this world. From balanced systems, where their ability to devour biofilms and decaying organic matter make a positive contribution, to polluted waters in which simply no other creature is able to exist, these snails can prosper. Belonging to the mollusks, the second largest phylum of invertebrate animals after the arthropods, they share common ancestry with cephalopods, the neurologically most advanced of invertebrates. These include intelligent animals like octopuses, squid and cuttlefish. Bladder snails may be much smaller than the colossal squid of the deep and less cunning than a cuttlefish, but as we saw today, they have developed some astounding ways to deal with the world around them. They evolved in the ocean, conquered the land, and only then took to an aquatic life again. And I almost forgot. One last, less scientific fact has to be mentioned. They are adorable. Thank you for coming along today. See you next time, when we will look at some other animal that has a scientific name that ends with pod.